Hi, in the last uh, video, I showed you how to create a user interface layout using the graphical layout editor. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to resource identifiers. And then I'm going to show you how to use this XML layout from your Java code. And finally, I'll be showing you how to use click listeners to handle click events. This is the layout that we are going to use in our application. This looks fine, but there is a small change I would like to make. In our application, the lights are initially turned off. But here in this layout, we have used images that represent the on state of the lights. So we are going to replace all these three images with a light off image so that the traffic light, I mean all the lights on the traffic signal seems to be turned off. I'm going to start with the red light. I'm going to click on this and from the property sheet you can see the source attribute. In order to change this red on image with the light off image I'm going to click on this little ellipsis button and from the reference chooser I'm going to double click light off. That replaces the red on image with the light off image. And now we have the yellow on image. This should be also be replaced with the light off image. So again, we have this green on image. I'm going to replace this with the light off image. So we are done. This looks good. And uh, this is the layout we'll be using in our uh, Java code. Since we have made this change, I'm going to save this by clicking on the save button. Before writing some Java code, let's take a look at our project structure once again. So to do that, I'm going to click on the restore button of this package explorer. And now we are back to the project. So this is our project structure and we know that besides Java code, an Android project can have resources. And those resources go under the resource folder. And for this project, we are using some resources uh, such as images which on Android terms is called as a drawable and we also have layouts which is also a resource when you have a closer look at the layout you can notice that it is just a file and when you all take a look at the drawable drawables are also files typically the green on image the red on image the yellow on image and the light of image all these are files so we need the easy way to refer these resources from our Java code. So Android provides a mechanism for this. It is called as a resource identifier. Resource identifiers are just integer values. They are unique and each and every resource is assigned to a resource identifier. Resource identifiers are automatically generated by the AAPT tool. I'll show you the place where all these resource identifiers are stored. And uh, you can notice that drawables and layouts are file based resources because each and every layout or each and every drawable itself is a resource. I have also mentioned earlier that if you want to reference a UI component or a view from your Java code, you need to give them IDs. And the IDs you assigned to views are also a kind of resource. So now we are dealing with three kinds of resources here, drawables, layouts, and IDs. And simply put, each and every resource should have a resource identifier. So every drawable will have a resource identifier, every layout will have a resource identifier, and every ID you assign to your view will have a resource identifier. That is it. We will be using these resource identifiers to access those resources from our Java code. Now you know what a resource identifier is, but this topic is not complete without exploring the gen folder. So we are going to take a look into it. The gen folder contains a package within which we have the r.java file. The r.java file contains resource identifiers for all the resources in the project. We're going to open this by double clicking on it. And the first line says it is an auto-generated file and you should not modify it. 
This file is generated by the Android Asset Packaging tool. It is also called as AAPT. If you take a closer look at the Java file, you could find several static inner classes. Notable ones are the class named Drawable, the class named ID, and the class named Layout. As mentioned previously, we know the drawables and layouts are file-based resources. And if you take a closer look at the name of the static final variables, they resemble the name of the actual resource file name. And from the previous theory, we also know each and every resource will have a resource identifier. In this case, we have one layout resource and so we have one layout resource identifier. In the case of a drawable, we have five resources. So we have five resource identifiers. And the name of the static final variables are similar to the file names. And when we are talking about IDs, we have six views with IDs on our layout. The red light, the yellow light, the green light. And we have three more buttons, the red button, the yellow button and the green button and that verifies the theory so this r.java file acts as the bridge between your java code and your resources in case if you want to access any of the resources from your java code you will be using these ids to reference those resources one more thing to remember this gen folder contains code that is automatically generated and which is managed by the Android build system. So we won't be messing around with this folder while working in any of our projects. Resource identifiers are so important that you'll be using them all over the place. Now we are going to finally write some Java code. Let's close this gen folder and we'll also close the resource folder and we are going to expand the source folder. The source folder contains a package and that package has a java file called as traffic lights activity.java. This is the java file we'll be working on. This traffic lights activity class extends an activity. An activity is similar to a window in your desktop operating system. And this class has a method called as onCreate. This is the method that is called by the Android framework when your activity is being initiated. This line super.onCreate of saved instance state, consider this as ceremonial for now. I'll be explaining it in detail in the upcoming tutorials. And this is where we set the content view for our activity. So you see the set content view method accepts a resource identifier that is a layout resource identifier as an input parameter. When you say set content view r dot layout dot traffic lights, you are referring to the traffic lights layout that we have built earlier in this tutorial. If we run this example, we'll see the emulator pop up and display the activity along with the layout. In order to run this program, I'm going to the run menu and I'm going to click on run. It takes a while for emulators to show up. It depends upon the configuration of uh, individual machines our emulator is downloading I'm going to unlock the AVD and here you go we can see that the activity is displayed right on our emulator when I click on the red hello or green buttons nothing happens because we don't have any code uh, to handle the click events now we are going to write some java code to make this functional we have three image views which we will be using to turn the lights on and off the red light image view the yellow light image view and the green light image view and also we have three buttons the red button the yellow button and the green button and we'll be clicking on these buttons to turn on the corresponding lights. So we'll be needing three reference variables for image view and three reference variables for the buttons. 
So I'm going to go and go ahead and create it. Private image view, red light, and private image view. This is for the yellow light. And private image view, green light. You will see this squiggly red line because we have not imported this. Just move your mouse over the squiggly red line and you can choose the import image view. When you click on import image view, the corresponding import is added automatically to your Java file. Likewise, we are going to create three reference variables for the buttons. Red button. And we need one for the yellow button. And third for the green button. And again, you will see these squiggly red lines. Just move your mouse over them and click on import button. Eclipse automatically adds the import statements. And now we are going to get the reference of our views to these variables. To do that, there is a method called as find view by ID, which finds the view inside your layout with the corresponding ID. So we are going to get the reference for the image views first. I'm going to start with the red light is equal to find view by ID. And we know the ID for the red light is red light. So R dot ID dot red light. You can see this is a resource identifier as well. Find view by ID actually returns a view and image view is a subclass of view. So what we are going to do now is we are going to add a typecast this view to an image view. So click on add cast to image view. So we are also going to get references for the other two image views. Find view by id r dot id dot yellow light and for the green light. Just hover your mouse over these quickly red line and click on add cast to image view. Add cast to image view. So we are done. And now we are going to get the references for the buttons too using the same method. Red button is equal to find view by id r dot id dot red button. We are going to add a cast to this button and hello button and finally the green button we have to do is when someone clicks on any of these buttons they should turn the corresponding lights on so to do that, we need a click listener. A click listener is a interface. You can add a click listener to any of the views uh, and most and mostly it is used with buttons. So I'm going to implement an on click listener in this activity, which will be handling click events for us. So I'm going to click here and type implements on click listener and you will get a squiggly red line move your mouse over it and there are two imports one in the android.view package and the other one from the android.content package make sure that you select the import on click listener from the android.view package as you know interfaces have methods that have to be implemented so that is why we get a squiggly red line on this traffic lights activity class uh, move your mouse over it and you can click on add an un unimplemented methods. So the on click listener contains a method called as on click which supplies the view that was clicked. So this is the method we are going to use. We are going to check if the view that was clicked is a red button 
we are going to turn on the red light. Else, if the view that was clicked is a yellow button, we are going to turn on the yellow light. And finally, we are going to check if the view that was clicked is a green button, we are going to turn on the green light. You see these quickly red lines? That is because these methods do not exist. I'm going to move my mouse over this method and you get this create method turn on green light. Click on it. You get a automatically generated method. We're going to do that for the yellow light and the red light. So we have three new methods turn on red light in which we are going to write the code that will turn the red light on and on the turn on yellow light we are going to write code which will turn the yellow light on and on the turn on green light method we are going to write the code which will turn the green light on so this is just a single line of code you can write red light dot set image resource The resource identifier we are going to use here is the r dot drawable dot red on. Likewise, we are going to you turn on the yellow light by writing yellow yellow light dot set image resource r dot drawable dot yellow on. And we are going to do the same with the green light as well green light dot set image resource r dot drawable dot green on we have implemented a click listener but we have not added this click listener or we have not specified a click listener to our buttons so now in the on create method we are going to assign this click event listener to our buttons so to do that type red button dot set on click listener and we are going to pass the current activity as the click listener that is because the current traffic lights activity class extends activity and it also implements the on click listener so the traffic lights activity is an activity and it is also a click listener so we are going to pass this as the parameter we are going to do the same for the yellow button set on click listener and the green button let's go ahead and run this program once again we're going to go to run and click on run the application shows up on the emulator and now when we click on the red button the red light goes on and when you click on the yellow button the yellow light goes on and the, when you click on the green button the green light goes on so it works but this is not what we wanted when you click on the red button only the red light should light up when you click on the yellow button only the yellow light should glow and when the, you click on the green light only the green light should turn on which means the other two lights should be turned off and now we are going to make a change that will bring up the intended result I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to define a new method called turn lights off in this we are going to say image light off so we are going to change the images on the red light the yellow light and the green light to off and when someone clicks on the button it should turn off all the lights and turn on the light it, it is associated with now let's save it and go back and click on run
and the application is launched once again and now we are going to click on red the red light turns on and you click on yellow only the yellow light turns on and you click on green the green light turns on so we are done with this application and in this video we learned three things we learned what resource identifiers are and we learned how to access resources from our java file and third we learned how to use click event listeners thank you